He's actually not only one of the funniest comics working today, his name is really fun to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Burr! How are you? How's it going? Still got some life in you? Awesome. I, uh, I can't wait for these elections to be over. You know? It's like enough already. Just fucking pick somebody. How many more goddamn debates are gonna be, right? Thousand points of light, health insurance trickling down, everybody gets applesauce. Doesn't matter. I'm trying, I want to find an honest guy. You know what I mean? Some guy who's just going to get on TV and be like, look, in order for this whole thing to work, at least two thirds of you need to just go to the beach and walk into the ocean. <laughs> There's only so much chicken and fresh water left. If you're not in that upper third, just be honest with yourselves. You know, they should have auditions. Whatever you do, you gotta audition to still be here, right? You're a plumber, fix that sink better than 70% of the other fuckers, and that's it. Put some wrenches in your pocket, go to the beach, and out you go. Yeah, straight across the board. Dentists, comedians, I'd do it. I'd stand in a line with a bunch of clowns, right? Tumblers and shit. <laughs> I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't. No, I take comfort in knowing that. There's no way I'm making it. I'm useless. I am. I'm 44. I'm not married. I don't have any kids. Why am I still here? Just another person taking up space, walking into a Starbucks. Oh, Cheryl Crow CD. Right? Why am I here? I have a horrible science background. Do you know cruise ships blow my mind? Blow my mind. I don't get how something that big in metal can float. I don't get it. it. Makes no sense. And there's always some nerd there to try to explain it. Well, the area times the mass. I'll fuck you with your magic. I don't get it. It's got a smokestack. It's got an anchor. Right? Dude, explain the pool. How can you have a pool on a boat? You dug a hole in the boat, filled it with water, you got fat people going in it. That's game, set, and match. Speaking of nerds, uh, when, is the, uh, when is the nerd epidemic just gonna end? Like, when is the nerd bubble just gonna burst? They're, they're fucking everywhere. Every show, they got some guy with black frame glasses. Oh, I'm kind of awkward. I don't know how to talk to the opposite sex. Like, I'm supposed, this is supposed to, like, inspire me? You know, when I was a kid, nerds had shame. They had shame. They had horrible days at school. They were stuffed in lockers, left there overnight reading whatever they could find. Then in the mornings, janitor let them out, and then they got the shit kicked out of them for wearing the same stuff two days in a row. <laughs> now they're walking around all proud, double pocket protectors, black socks yanked up. This is what happens when you get rid of bullying. <laughs> it is. When you get rid of a species natural predator, it, it just grows exponentially. <laughs> Actually, nerd Jesus died in the last year, right? Steve Jobs. Yeah, he died, right? I know, I know, a lot of nerds here tonight. I know, you're sad. I didn't get it. I didn't get the big deal they made about that guy. When he died, they were like, he changed the world. That was insane. He changed the world. The world was one way. And then Steve Jobs came, and it was another. What did he do? Somebody, for the love of God, what the fuck did that guy do? What did he do? He told other people what to invent? I want my entire music collection in that phone. Get on it! Right? 
And then these poor, nameless, faceless scientists gotta go in a back room and figure it out. How the fuck are we gonna get all of this into this? I mean, what year does this guy think this is? This is crazy. This is like Buck Rogers. Dude, my kid has a birthday in like 11 months. Steve Jobs just walking by. I don't hear any thinking going on in there. Just strutting around the office, eating some pretentious fruit like a pear, right? Just throwing out ideas. There's another one. There's another one I just came up with on the way to work. I was reading a magazine the other day, turning pages, you know? I like to turn pages on a screen that aren't even there. Yeah, wrap your fucking heads around that, guys. See you in eight years. Where are you going, Michael? Big, little, big, little, get on it! <laughs> right? Then all these people slave away to make his vision come true. And then they have the big nerd fest, right? Down there, Comic-Con, and all their nerd mecca. They're all showing up with their acne and their Hulk shirts, limping into the arena, right? Does Steve Jobs go out with a whole chorus line of scientists? No, he goes out there by himself. Sneakers and no belt, like it was no biggie, right? <laughs> like he's, like he's Tesla, <laughs> tapping into the atmosphere. I know, this is always uncomfortable. I know, you bought into it, right? That whole advertising, the way they aligned themselves with some of the greatest people of all time. Jesus, Gandhi, me! <laughs> Remember that? Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, this guy! How the fuck was that dude like any of them? Gandhi didn't have a sweatshop. Nah, he didn't have people leaping to their deaths only to get, catch a net and get ricocheted back through the window to have to put together yet another iPad. John Lennon didn't have children in his basement pressing those fucking albums. I know, I know. New phone can't fit the old charger. This is your hero. <laughs> this is the guy. This is what all the silence is about. New phone can't fit the old charger, so then you gotta throw it out, ends up in the ocean around some octopus's neck. <laughs> Do you realize how much sea life is ecstatic that that man is no longer walking the earth? <laughs> That's where it all ends up, you know. Doesn't go in a landfill, ends up in the ocean. You realize that? I hate people who say I don't pollute. I don't pollute. Yeah, you do. You use shit and you throw it out. Well, you think because you put it in like a basket, it just poof, disappears? <laughs> Everything you ever used is somewhere. You ever think about that? Remember that flannel shirt you bought back in the day when you got into Pearl Jam? <laughs> That's out there somewhere. Probably on some porpoise's face, tr trying to get it off. <laughs> Stupid little flippers. All the fads. You remember rollerblading? Remember that? Everybody had them. We set up cones, we did little tricks, right? One little homophobic joke killed that entire fad. What's the hardest thing about rollerblading? Eh, yeah, telling your parents you're gay. Full grown adults, dude, I'm not gay. I don't have the cooties. These mean I suck dick. And they just threw them out. They end up in the ocean. They're made out of plastic, they can't biodegrade. They just break down to little cubes. Fish are breathing them in. Six months later, you're going out, you're getting sushi, you think you're being healthy, you're eating your old rollerblades. <laughs> All right, I'm out of time, you guys are great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm afraid to get married, man. Why would, why wouldn't, as, why man wouldn't be afraid to get married at this point? You know, look at Kobe, look at the shit he's going through right now. All right, guy's getting a divorce. His wife's gonna get 70 million bucks. Never hit a layup in her life. You know, can anybody explain these divorce settlements? Can anybody make sense of these fucking things? Tiger Woods' wife, 250 million dollars. She's a babysitter worth a quarter of a billion fucking dollars. Somebody, go ahead, somebody, explain, justify it. Justify it, what, what, he cheated on her? I don't give a fuck. 
Yeah, I don't give a fuck. He cheated on her. Great, the relationship's over right then. Kobe cheated, right? Shouldn't that relationship been over right then? Why did she hang around like some jaded cop for three years trying to get a fucking pension, right? Get that 10 years in. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's too harsh. That shit bothers me, man. Dude, there is an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country. <laughs> and every night I put on the news and I'm waiting for someone to address it. Every night, never see it, you know? And every night I bring up gold digging whores and the whole crowd pulls back like I'm up here talking about Bigfoot, right? <laughs> like I'm saying the moon's made out of cheese or something. <laughs> talking about whores, people. They're everywhere. How many? How many more great men are gonna get chopped in half before we do something? Why is it so quiet in here? God damn, I don't get it. What is it? Is it women? Do you think I'm calling you? I'm not calling any woman here a whore, okay? So don't pull back. That, that's not fair, okay? If you brought up wife beaters, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like pull back. I get it. There's guys hitting women, they need to be stopped. We gotta understand that gold digging whores are the wife beaters for men. Yeah, they are, except we don't have that Rihanna lumped up photo in the end, so it's not obvious. It's in the eyes. It's in the lines in your face. It's in Mel Gibson's high-pitched voice on the answering machine. I had to give up my Laker tickets, right? That is the sound of a man being taken for everything he's got. I gotta tell you, sis, I'm envious of women, okay? I'm not saying your problems get solved, but at least they're taken seriously. You know? People, you got 1-800 numbers, you, get, you, got, you got ribbons, there's groups. People give a shit. Anything happens to a guy, it's just considered funny. Some woman cut her husband's dick off, threw it in the garbage disposal, and turned it on. People thought it was hilarious. They were like, hey, hey, Stumpy, nobody cares. You think if a guy removed a woman's titty and threw it in the dryer, anybody would be joking about it the next day? The entire country would grind to a halt. There'd be a moment of silence. The NFL would have some special colored headband everybody had to wear for an entire month. The most effeminate color they could possibly come up with. All my heroes are going down. Arnold Schwarzenegger, another great man. Another great man. Taken down by that gold digging whore of a maid he's got. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's not a piece of shit for doing what he did, it was a piece of shit move. But how come only he got chastised? What about the maid? Why was she called the maid the, that entire story? She was never called a whore, ever. <laughs> Just boggled my mind. She knew his wife, first name basis, played with their kids, fucked her husband in their own goddamn bed. That's right down the checklist. First ballot Hall of Fame whore, right there. <laughs> Never. Why do you think she hooked up with him? Because of that 1987 flat top he's still rocking? The giant space between his teeth, I could put this mic cord through? What do you think? Maybe it's all that kindergarten cop money laying around the goddamn bedroom. No, oh, it's awful. It's a horrific thing to see as a guy, watching guys go through that shit, you know? And then there's no, there's no sort of examination of it. They just go, ah, he's an idiot. Hey, stupid. <laughs> that guy's stupid? If that guy's stupid, what the fuck am I, right? <laughs> Does it even make sense? Why would you do that? Why would you accomplish all that and then fuck it up, hooking up with one of the ugliest human beings I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> Not saying I'm a prize, I'm just saying, you know? It's gotta be something beyond that, right? You know what I think it is? I think it comes down to the way he talks, you know? <laughs> that dude should be unloading trucks in Transylvania. <laughs> that should be, that should have been the height of his success. But because he's a great man, he had the balls to move to America. Became famous for lifting weights. I lift weights, nobody gives a shit. He lifts weights, ah, 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 becomes super famous. Did he rest on his laurels? No, next challenge. I'm gonna become an actor, despite the fact that nobody can really understand me. <laughs> Against all odds, he starts making movies. Get down, there's a bomb, get out of there. 
becomes one of the biggest blockbuster stars of all time. What are you gonna do next, Arnie? I think I'm mad at Kennedy. There's no fucking way you can do that. Bam, he does it. <laughs> Cherry on top, I'm running for governor of a state I can't even pronounce, and he wins the election. <laughs> Why wouldn't this guy think he couldn't bang his maid in his own bed and get away with it? This dude has been in the zone for over four decades. Four decades, nothing but net. Bang a maid in my own bed, dude, that's a layup. Are you serious? I had a hit movie with the midget. I don't even need a condom. Right? And then what happens? The smoke clears. Then all these trolls come out of the woodwork and start judging this great man. All these fatties. These fucking old guys who never got any with their jowls coming on TV. Absolutely reprehensible behavior. <laughs> what kind of a public servant? His, his, his legacy is shrouded. <laughs> <laughs> like they have any idea what it's like to be tempted at that level, right? Like they have groupies as they waddle out to their mercury tracer <laughs> parked on the other side of a dumpster. Really? You're beating them off? This guy, he's not a great man anymore? Terminator doesn't count? Is that what the fuck you're telling me? Because he fucked Alice? Really? He's still not a great man because he did that. Then that's, the whole thing's over? Anybody here think they could move to Austria, learn the language, become famous for working out, then be a movie star, then marry into their royalty and hold public office? How many lifetimes would you need? I'm on my third attempt at Rosetta Stone Spanish. All right? How can I judge these guys? I can barely handle the temptations of Facebook. I'm gonna judge Tiger Woods. I golf, I don't walk off the 18th hole and there's a busload of Scandinavian women waiting to fuck my brains out. Sorry ladies, gotta go home to the wife, right? No, it kills me. And there's no help out there for guys. There isn't. There's nothing out there to help you handle becoming rich and famous. There's nothing to prepare you for that, for that platoon of whores that's gonna form on the horizon, right? Like Braveheart, faces painted, skirts on, will run down the hill, they'll jump on your dick in front of your wife. They don't give a shit. It's not even a handbook out there. I saw one article written about it on, time, on the cover of Time Magazine. It said, why do so many rich, famous, and powerful men act like absolute pigs, right? And the article was actually written by a woman that's like me writing a book, the third trimester, and what to expect. <laughs> Ladies, you're gonna feel a pressure. How the hell would I know? You don't wanna hear that from me, right? Then why is this woman telling me what it's like to have a dick? That makes no sense. You have no idea what it's like to have a dick. 24-7, do it, do it, fuck it, do it. That's what it's saying. Do it, do it. Yeah, do it. That's how we survived as a species. Every man in here is programmed to fuck 85% of the women in this room, right? Yeah, we are. Do it, do it, fuck it, do it, you know? It's just that you won't. That's the only reason why we don't, you know? That's not you keeping your dick in check, you know? Some guy at, at Home Depot working there, he wants to fuck just as many women as a celebrity, right? But he, he can't do it because whores don't care about lumber, right? <laughs> But the second he hits the fucking lottery, all of a sudden, you know that, do it, do it, fuck it, do it, you know? That wasn't affecting his life. Then all of a sudden these whores show up, I'll do it, I'll suck it, I'll do it, right? <laughs> no, somebody's got, somebody's got to step up, all right? I'm not even blaming whores, really. Just guys, we're fucking idiots. What are we doing? Why are we working so hard and then giving it all away to some chick who did three shifts at a, at a fucking Hooters, you know? <laughs> They're fucking bums sitting there with fucking Dorito dust in their cleavage, walking around with hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm sick of that shit. That's what the law says. hundred years ago, I could beat you with a fucking mop handle. and be like, well, that's what the law says. Doesn't make us right. No, it's unreal. And all this shit's going down, and we don't, we, we're not doing anything. What are we doing? Same old shit. Sitting around watching Shark Week, right? <laughs> watching shit about poisonous snakes half a world away, just filling your head up with all this useless information. What to do if you come face to face with a Bengal tiger? Don't look at it, don't look away. Slowly back up as you push your friend forward, right? <laughs> all 
this useless information, yet hang it between your legs is this thing that could crumble your entire empire seven minutes or less. Don't know a fucking thing about it. <laughs> Even worse, you think it's your friend. Yeah, you know why? Because your dick, your dick's like a dreamer. You know? Your dick believes. It's like a motivational speaker. <laughs> I don't give a shit what question you ask it. It's always like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Exit strategy. Later. We'll be fine. <laughs> Where's your dick when you get caught, right? Then it's just slumped over. Like, hey, I thought it was a good idea. You know? Yeah. You have to know that. Dude, your if your dick was the third base coach, it wouldn't hold anybody up. It'd just be fucking waving people around. Everybody, go in standing up. You got it. You got it. Oh, shit, there she comes. Slide, slide, slide. All right, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope you had as good a time as I did. Thank you. I think I'll be a good dad, though. You know? I do. <laughs> no, I analyze it. I don't th I've actually co finally come to the point. I want to have a kid, and I don't think it's that hard. I don't. Part of me really believes that, and the other part is I just like pissing off people with kids. You know? <laughs> Whenever you say shit like that, oh, you have no idea how difficult it is. This is a great one to say. Well, I mean, I got a dog. I mean, you know. How much stuff? Dude, you can't even fucking compare it to a dog! Yeah, I can! I just did! And I'll do it again! <laughs> Mine's got four legs, yours only has two! Go ahead! <laughs> yours bites someone and gets a timeout, mine gets put down! <laughs> Stakes are raised! No, I think I know. I think I know how to raise a kid. You know what it is? You just, you just play catch with them. I think that's the big deal, man. That's how you raise a kid. You play catch with them. You just talk about life. You distract them by throwing the ball. They don't even notice you're filling their heads up with your theories. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't do it the old school way, the way your parents used to. Sit down across from you. You want to tell me about your day? Did anybody offer you any drugs? You're learning about sex? You're like, dude, you're fucking freaking me out. I'm trying to eat a Pop-Tart here, right? <laughs> hey, just taking them back. You play catch with them. That's it. You talk about life, right? What's that, son? Ah, we're not going to church today. Fuck that. That's <laughs> ah, all a bunch of bullshit. God's everywhere, but I got to go down there to see him, really? And he's mad at me down there, and I owe you money? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Just try. That's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's in here, all right? It's not down. It's in here. They try to take it. It's down. It's in here. You do something good, you feel good. You do something bad, you feel bad, you know? Unless you're like a sociopath, and you don't feel shit. You know, unless you got somebody duct taped upside down in your apartment, you know? And, and if you do something like that, I want you to feel like you can come to me, you know? <laughs> yeah, come to me, confess all of that. We'll go down to the precinct, we'll tell them everything. Yeah, I'm gonna turn you in. This isn't fucking Dexter. What are you, are you mind? <laughs> There's some feel-good serial killer walking around. He only kills the, the bad people. <laughs> Listen. I know your mother and I, we've been arguing a lot lately, all right? But I know, you, know, you know I love her. I love her to death, okay? It's weird. I love her to death, but when I watch her eat toast, I just want to, I just want to choke her. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's, like, it's the routine, right? Left, then the middle. Just, why don't you just fold it in half and fucking eat it? You know what I mean? It's unreal. You know? That's, that, that's when you know you, you know you met the right one. When you want to slap the shit out of him, but you don't. You know, you want to leave, but you don't. There's something about them you just can't fucking leave, right? So don't settle down till you meet one like that. That's, that's when you know. Till then, you know, put a condom on, you know, just bang as many as you can so you don't have a midlife crisis. That's what you do. Don't tell your mother I'm telling you any of this shit either. <laughs> yeah. That's my, uh, that's, that's my game plan. You know, I do have a dog. That doesn't count for anything. I've never understood that. You know, I love my dog, but uh, I've learned a lot being a dog owner, man. You know, any dog's a good dog unless you're a psycho. You know, I got a pit bull. It's still a great dog unless you're a fucking psycho. And evidently, I'm a psycho because my dog has been a, just been a complete maniac 
over the last like six months, you know? I didn't realize that dogs feed off your vibes, you know? Like if you're chilling, they're chilling, you know? If you're sleeping, they're sleeping. But if you're a psycho like me and you're screaming at the ref on TV being like, dude, you gotta be fucking kidding me! I didn't realize the dog was over in the corner being like, yeah, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> this is bullshit. I don't know what this guy's mad at, but I love this guy. This guy feeds me. Is it the door? Are you mad at the door? <laughs> yeah, I had no idea I was amping this dog up. I'm so selfishly in my own world. I'd be like on the computer and would crash. You'd be like, oh, really? Really? Dog's over in the corner with like a chew toy. <laughs> I never noticed like that game seven look she was getting on her face. And one day I amped her up too much, had no clue. And I went outside, we were just walking down the street and some poor bastard comes the other way and the dog's like, that's that motherfucker. Yeah! <laughs> Lunge at this guy, I had to pull her back. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. She's never done anything like that, right? Looking down at the dog, what's wrong with you? Dog's looking up at me like, huh? I got that son of a bitch, didn't I? <laughs> I love you, you feed me, I got you. How the hell did you see him that far away, man? Your ears must be better than mine. It's unbelievable, <laughs> right? Then I got nervous. I got nervous around my own dog. I started thinking, fuck, are pit bulls really like this? Do they just go psycho? Man, this is nuts, right? That's another bad vibe to have around your dog because they pick up on that vibe, right? This dude comes walking down the street and I immediately just start thinking like, oh shit, she gonna do it again? Oh shit, oh shit. Dog just looks at me like, oh shit, what? Oh shit, what? Him, 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 ah! Runs at another guy. Had to pull her back. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Looking down at the dog, dog's trying to chest bump me and shit, right? <laughs> Dude, it got so bad one day, she almost, she almost ate a landscaper, right? Yeah, so I'm like, I gotta, I gotta take this thing to a trainer, man. So I load it up in the Prius, and I drive over there, right? Yeah, I have a Prius. Go ahead, judge me. I love that shit. If you have a Prius, people, you know, you can't win. You got a truck with a big lift kit, people, oh, it's probably because he has a little dick. Right? How come it's not because he has his dick down to the floor? Maybe that's why he needs all that clearance. Right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> if that means you have a little dick, then if, if I have a Prius, doesn't that mean I, I have a huge dick? Right? Because according to my friends, it means I'm a fag. Right? <laughs> Anyways. Let me towel off here for a moment. So I fucking take this dog down to this trainer, right? And I show up, got the dog in the back. Trainer comes out, he's got his hat on backwards, he got stubble, you know, big, large cargo pants, you know, all shorts on and stuff. And I'm thinking, this guy's a psycho, right? And I look at my dog, my dog's like sizing him up. I'm like, this is perfect, he can handle him. So the guy goes, all right, when you hand this dog to me, make sure you got the leash totally taut like that, all right? Don't have any slack in it. I said, no problem, right? And somehow I fucked up, I left a little slack in it, and this dog just lunged right at the dude's balls, right? <laughs> and just barely missed him and just got a big mouthful of his big cargo shorts, right? And immediately he just grabs and goes, all right, get out of here, get out of here, right? But instinctually, I tried to help out and he just goes, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that the only reason why the dog was acting like that was because I was there and it felt like it needed to protect me. So the second I left, the situation immediately just became awkward, right? The dog was just sitting there like, Okay, like, I thought we were, like, together, and we were, like, friends, and you were some bad guy, and all of a sudden, you just drove away, and I don't know how to feed myself. You want to be friends? <laughs> yeah, I come back four days later, the dog's laying at the guy's feet, all right? He's rubbing her belly. She's reaching up, playing with his goatee and shit. And he goes, go ahead, ha have, a, have a seat. Why don't you, uh, why don't you uh, take me through your day with this dog? Immediately, I started getting, like, this first 48 vibe, right? <laughs> Like they're coming at me. So I got like defensive. I'm like, what do you mean? I take it for a hike every morning. He goes, that's good, that's good. Anything, you know, special happen on the hike? I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. She takes a shit. I pick it up. It's like, all right, easy. <laughs> you play any games with her? I go, yeah, at the end of the hike. I let her, I let her, you know, for reward for going on the hike, I let her run up the stairs by herself. I go, go on, Cleo, and let her run up the stairs, and I count five, 1,000, and then I run up there, and then we start wrestling. Put her in a headlock, sweep her front legs, ah, right? But her tail's wagging, you know? She's not growling. I go, that's a good thing, right? He's like, no, it's fucking horrible. I'm like, why? He goes, you just taught your dog to claim the house and then fight for it every fucking day after the hike. No wonder this thing's trying to attack the mailman, you know? 
So then I got upset. I'm like, wait a minute, dude. You're telling me like I can't even play with my dog? He's like, no, you can play with it, but you got to bring that energy back down. The problem is, is you keep amping this thing up, getting that Mike Singletary look on his face. And then by the time you walk out, doesn't matter if you're relaxed. Mentally, the dog is like walking through the tunnel at the Rose Bowl, like, this is what we play for. <laughs> somebody hit somebody. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually learning to control my temper because of a fucking pit bull. So, I don't know, my girls. So check that one out. Check that one out. Why don't you? Um, all right, that's it. Now let, let me get on to the advice. Like I said, I got to blow through it this week. I apologize. Um, hey, Bill. So I was going out with this girl. Uh, she was real cute and real funny, and we had a lot in common. Oh, uh, dude, this is a br this is a fucking weird story here. He goes, uh, we had gone out four or five times, so I thought I was getting you know semi serious. Then one day she called me and told me we had to cancel cancel a dinner we had planned for later that week. She had a legitimate reason, so I was like, just like, ah, right, fuck it. Well, just reschedule, no biggie, right? So later in the week, I call her and get her voicemail and leave her a message asking if she uh, if she was free a certain day to have dinner. She never gets back to me. So I wait a few more days and I call her again. I end up leaving another message. Fucking nothing. Never calls me back. At this point, I wait about a week and call again and leave one more message. Not a goddamn thing. What the fuck? Who does that? Sorry, I got lost there. What the fuck? Who does that? Fucking at least call me. Tell me it's over. Tell me I'm lame. Say you have to wash your hair or your dog ate your love life, but fucking call. I've talked to my parents and friends and they have all consoled me and gave me advice or whatever, but I needed advice from... I wanted to get some advice from you. Um, all right. Well, let's be honest. She took the easy way out. Um... <laughs> you know, she obviously didn't want to see you anymore, obviously. And, yeah, she she took the fucking easy way out. And um, who's getting who? Breaking up with somebody is one of the hardest things. The fear of it. You know, I saw this thing on Intervention one time where they were talking about drug addicts. And they say, basically, they, they'll spend 20 years avoiding, you know, 10 days of pain by continuing to medicate themselves because in their head the pain of going through getting clean is so fucking huge that they that they'll continue they'll, they'll, they'll go through 20 years of fucking hell you know and that's what relationships can be like where people get into relationships and they want to break up with someone they just don't know how to fucking do it and they're just thinking oh my god i'm gonna break this person's heart they're gonna cry i'm gonna feel horrible uh, you know, and for guys, what if they start screaming and throwing shit and charging me, you know, with assault? Because when they threw a bookcase at me, it bounced off my big forehead and then hit their big toe, you know? Um, so, I know this is going to sound fucked up, but is, is she kind of, she did you a favor in a weird, she obviously felt that there wasn't uh, the connection to make it long lasting. Um, and I know she took the coward way out, but at least she, she, she figured out a way to get out of it before she fucking ripped your heart out of your chest. I mean, I know it probably sucked, but it didn't seem like, you know, you had been going, you said you're going out four or five times. So I thought it was good. Yeah. You know, so you went out like four, you know, four or five times, dude. I mean, that's some shit. You can get over that at a keg party, you know, a couple of fucking plastic, 16 ounces and you grab the fucking closest hooters looking chick you know or whatever talk a little bit of shit you know uh, uh, so she did you a favor man so i don't know how old you are but this girl sounds like you guys sound like you're young and when you're young you really don't know how to do it um the best way i found to do it i mean we actually should have like a fucking class on that how to break up with somebody First of all, you you got to psych yourself up mentally to do it. And you just have to be like, all right, we're going to talk at two. And my life is going to suck from about two to possibly 4.30 or 5. And I just have to understand that the next three hours of my life is going to suck. You know? 
It's kind of like if you had to fight a kid after school. You're like, okay, we're fighting around three. By the time I remember, a buddy of mine used to always get into fights. That's what I, because I used to be like, dude, how the fuck do you fight like that? And he goes, I just think in an hour I'm going to be home. I'm going to be in my bed. Everything's going to be fine. It's kind of the same way I look at like, you know, if back in the day when I do a college gig and they just have me standing in a fucking hallway with no microphone. And I'm like, all right, this is going to be absolutely humiliating. But in an hour from now, I'll have my check and I'll be in my fucking, you know, Buick Skylark rented from Avis or whatever. And I'll be fucking dri driving away from here and it'll just be a funny story. Who gives a shit? So that's kind of what you have to do. And, uh, and you can't leave any, there's no daylight. And a great way to stop, to start is just to say that you're not happy. You know, I'm not happy. What do you mean? You know, I'm just, I'm not happy. You know, you're a great person. You can, do, you know, all of that type of stuff. I feel horrible, but, you know, it's not working for me. And I have to figure out why. And I just, this just doesn't feel right anymore. You got to, and you just get that out. And once you get that out, then the fucking tears and all the bullshit comes. And then you just, you fucking, you just got to stand there and take it. You know? And it's just getting through that first major fucking day of it. And then you got to have other conversations. It's fucking brutal. It's fucking brutal. So getting back to this, look, you know, you guys sound like you're young, and I just don't think that she has the mental ability to be like, yeah, listen, you know, we've gone out like four or five times. I think you're a really nice guy, but I just don't feel like it's going to go anywhere else. And, blah, blah. and who's kidding who? If she did that, you'd still be just as fucking pissed. But it is weird when they just disappear off the face of the earth like that. I've, I've had that, man. I had the classic, uh, she's in the shower. And her roommate sucked at lying. and was She's in the shower. Call back in a half an hour. And I called back in a half an hour. Um, she's repairing her credenza. Call back in 17 minutes. And I called back in 17 minutes. Dude, I called. What a fucking moron. I must have called like eight times. And then they finally stopped answering the phone. You know? You ever have that? Like you're avoiding somebody's call. And in like you're thinking they're finally not going to call. And then the phone rings. And you literally get that little fucking heart attack in your chest. You're almost scared of the goddamn phone. Um... Whatever, dude. She didn't know how to break up with you, and she did, and she did you a favor, dude, because she could have stuck with you for another six months, and you could have been walking around telling all your friends how much you love her and how great she is, and then she dumps you out of fucking nowhere, or bangs one of your friends, and then you got to carry, you could carry that shit around for eight years, and you know what you do? You end up, you start going out hurting other girls who had nothing to fucking do with that. So, in a weird way, consider yourself lucky. You're out of it, you know. Why would you want to waste any more time with someone who's not into you anyways? It, you're absolutely right. It was fucked up. She should have called you, but she's just not at that level of maturity. And uh, you got a life to lead, so there's no reason to carry around anymore. You understand me? So you go out there, you have a couple of drinks, you talk some shit to some broads this weekend, and you put her fucking behind you. And it's football season. You know? Go fire up the fucking grill and forget about her. All right, here we go. Moving on. Next one. Phil, I watched a couple of your shows and videos. This might be my favorite name of anything I've ever advertised here, uh, other than One White Charlie's. Uh, Sherry's Berries. It says, insert story when you've given or received uh, the gifts. Well, I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten Sherry's Berries yet. Ever. All right, Sherry's Berries. Since the end of the, the year is all about delicious holiday food. Why not send an extra special holiday treat to friends, family, business associates, associates, everyone you know? I've never met a person who didn't love Sherry's Berries. Send giant dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries for only $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. For my listeners, double the berries for just $10 more. Berries are terrific and a sweet holiday gift. They also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get this special 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. <laughs> Call 866-FRUIT. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Call 866-FRUIT, everybody. <laughs> Eight, I'm sorry, 866-FRUIT-0-2. Or even better, <laughs> visit berries.com. <laughs> oh, punch truck. Oh, please spell out the words. Oh, by all means, berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in burr. <laughs> you got to see these enormous berries for yourself. Go, I swear to God, this is the copy. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and tip in burr. Type in burr. Dip your balls and dip your berries in that. Don't wait now. Order. Order some chocolate berries for the fucking person in your life. Oh, shit. I needed that. That was wonderful. I'm sure I'll get some complaints on that one. We need a conference call. Can't do it. I'm in Helsinki. Hey, you cunts better buy some Sherry's Berries because I'm going to get in trouble with that fucking read. And I'm not changing it because that was hilarious. Um, oh, wiping tears away here. Um, <laughs> and I, my apologies to Berries.com. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the copy before I read that. This, I'm too fucking immature to read shit like that. I'm sure you have wonderful chocolate-covered berries. All right? <laughs> All right, cheating. Hey, Bill. Um, word on the street is you're the male version of Oprah, so hear me out. You know, that's actually insulting to Oprah, all right? Um, I've got this lady I'm fooling around with now and then. She has a boyfriend but doesn't seem to mind hooking up with me when I ask her to. Yeah, that chick's a fucking nightmare, dude. Uh, and before we even go, you're not going to have a relationship with her. If she cheats on someone, she'll end up cheating on you. And every time you fuck her, you're risking one of these times that boyfriend's going to find out and he might show up with a tire iron and, uh, you know, remodel your face. Anyways, when we met, she never wants to go further than second base, saying that would be cheating. Um, last night, I went to her house to pick her up for a party. Dude, there's not another woman out there that you could pick up for a party? What are you doing, dude? Do you want to be that guy? Do you want to be the guy who fucking plays with the tits of some fucking broad that has a boyfriend? Come on. Oh, there's nothing makes a guy weaker than uh, fucking easy pussy. Easy pussy has brought down more goddamn men. The layup piece of ass. Because um, we're lazy. Anyways, before we made it, and when I say we're lazy, I mean human beings in general. All right, ladies, before you fucking pat yourself on the back and make your tits shake. Um, <laughs> um, last night, I went to her house to pick her up for a party. Uh, before we made it in the, in the car, I had her up against my car. We were making out like World, World War II ended. I then suggested, suggestively opened the door to the back seat. But instead of entering, she asked me if I loved her or if I just wanted sex. Yeah, dude, this girl's crazy. I neither confirmed nor denied either of those questions. Yeah, that's stupid. That's a great lie. That's great. All right. This is just straight across. the. This is a linear story. Begins with deceit, goes into deceit, and it's going to end with it. Um, I just went back to kissing her. After she got drunk at the party... Ah, Jesus. Nah, and you're sitting there like a fucking wolf waiting for her to get hammered. Uh, we talked again, and she said she was willing to dump her boyfriend and have sex with me if I just told her that I love her and want to be with her. I actually don't, but I really want to bang this chick. I was thinking about just saying I love her and then dumping her after we banged, but I guess that would be kind of a dick move. Yeah, it would be. But I gotta, we gotta, everybody's got to take responsibility for their actions. This fucking woman is setting herself up for this shit. My, Morris comp my moral compass has no needle, needle, Bill. Help me out. Greetings from Belgium. 
Uh, I hope you were able to read that fluently as you always do. Look at this guy. Fucking sarcastic in a second language. Um, yeah. Listen, uh, you know, do you really want to be this guy? That's that's a, If you believe in karma, that's a really bad thing to do. All right? You're being lazy. Okay, this girl's obviously damaged. There's something wrong with her. And um, if you do what you're thinking of doing just so you can bang her, you're really going to devastate her. And is it worth devastating another human being just to get, just to, to fucking bang her? Here's one for you. This is classic, all right? This is uh, not my advice. This is standard advice, okay? Here's the deal. Why don't you rub one out to her and afterwards immediately think, do I really think about what you're doing and the way you're going to be getting this girl and ask yourself if you really want to do it. All right. And then act accordingly. And if you still want to do it, um, please don't ever get a job in a corporation because you will move up that ladder in 20 seconds. Oh, my God. He's a sociopath. He has no feelings. He doesn't care about people. Let's give him a corner office. Um, all right. Size issues. Oh, Jesus. Here we go again. Here we go again. Maybe you need a motorcycle. All right. Size issues. Uh, que pasa, Bilinardo? Hola, Bilinardo. Que pasa? Ocho. Uh, we all know your disability um, to read pop properly. Well, you know what? You don't even know how to write a sentence properly. Half of this shit is I get too far in front of myself, and the other half is you guys don't know how to write a fucking sentence. We all know your disability to read properly. Is that even written correctly, or am I a moron again? We all know you have a disability when it comes to reading properly. Isn't that how it's supposed to be? So I, I don't fuck. So I'm going to give it the, my best shot to keep it very short. Look at you coming with the arrogance like you have all life, life figured out, right? You got something tattooed on your rib cage. Um... As you may have read the subject title of this email, you may already know where this is heading. Yeah, you seem pretty cocky for a guy with a little dick. Um, he says, I recently got into an argument with my girlfriend, who I've, who I've been with for a little more than two and a half years, where she told me that she wished I had a bigger dick. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, that relationship is over, dude. That relationship is over one of two ways. Either one, she's just trying to be so fucking mean to you that you break up with her because she doesn't want to be the bad guy. Or she's just such a fucking self-involved human being that she doesn't realize, like, how mean that is. They'd be like, you said, yeah, no, I like you. I wish your tits were bigger. That would just be the meanest fucking thing. Why would you say that to somebody that you cared about? That's a horrible thing to say, sir. You know what? You started off as an arrogant cunt. Now I'm feeling bad for you. Uh, dude, that's not the mother of your kids. Just take the dick out of the equation. What if you just said your nose is too big? That's just fucking, uh, that's, 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 that's just something a terrible person says. She goes, I was shocked to hear this and didn't know what to say. There's nothing to say. There's nothing you can do about it. This is the first time she ever mentioned my penis size. Also the first time in my life, by the way, I guess anybody's ever brought it up. To be honest, I don't know that I'm, not well endowed with my 5.5 inch rocket. You're a little below average, sir. I'm not going to lie to you. Now I'm being me. You know, you can grab the rim, but you can't stuff it home, if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> and I did have little uh, have insecurities about it in the past, but learned to accept it and moved on. I never heard any of my former bed partner girls complain, and the sex was usually great. Um. I know that it may sound ridiculous, but those few words were heartbreaking to hear and put a big giant stain on my confidence. Yeah, it's a terrible thing that she said. I haven't felt like having sex ever since and she made oh, ever since she made that remark, and I am afraid it's going to be a while. I haven't spoken to her since the argument, since I work a lot and we don't live together. I know it's a stupid thing to be upset about. No, it isn't, sir. You're a hundred percent in the right. Hundred percent in the right. And he goes, and I usually don't really care about penis sizes. Uh, but hearing that you're small from your own girlfriend is a whole other story. I'm typically not that guy that gets back at her, 
by pointing out her physical flaws, but I don't know where to go from here. Uh, it's even been difficult texting with her. What do I do, Bill? Got any advice? Okay, you said you don't know where to go from here. I can tell you exactly where to go. Right out her front fucking door. That's it. It's a wrap, sir. It's a wrap, okay? Now, listen, I'm not saying that she's wrong for wanting a bigger dick, okay? Like she needs more to satisfy her or whatever, or she just wants to go out and bang some fucking big dick dude at this point, <laughs> all right? You know, but her tact is wrong, okay? You, you, you would accept it yourself, which is one of the greatest things you can do that leads towards being happy every day, which leads you to treating the people around you respectfully, which leads them to treating you respectfully, which leads to more happiness. She fucked with the core of your happiness. You know, you felt good about yourself. She pointed out something and made you feel horrible about yourself. It's one of the worst fucking things she could have done as far as mentally to you. And, and right now, the last thing you want to do is go out and say the same thing to her. All right. If you really want to do, just paraphrase what the fuck I just said. It just, just, I don't know. And I, I would just leave it at that. I, and, and the childish thing to do, this is what you really want to get her back. Just say, and the childish thing for me to do would point out some, some of your physical flaws. And the great thing is, is you leave it ambiguous. Okay. And I guarantee you, she's going to be in a bathroom mirror staring at herself. Uh, if you want to get mean. Okay. But, um, you know what this, but I got to tell you something, what's even better. You, you got to have this, what's known as the self-esteem breakup. Okay. Which you're totally in the right here. And you just say, listen, all right. What you said to me, I felt, I used to feel good about myself and what you said to me mess with the core of my own, my own happiness and how I feel about myself. And that's not what I'm looking for in a girlfriend or a potential wife. And uh, I just can't see you ever being a good mother. If you would say something like that, it's just something along those lines. I, I don't know. Don't, I, I keep going mean. Don't go mean. Uh, whatever the fuck I just said. I was just trying to paraphrase what the fuck I said. But, it, dude, this, this is, you, you should feel good about yourself. All right? You know, you, you're not a porn star, but you're also, you know, you're not like, uh, you, you're not what she's making you out to be here. All right. That's it. You still you're still in the game, sir. OK, you're not part of the starting five. Hey, neither am I. You know, but you and I, we come off that bench. OK, we're the kind of guys. We're the guys that go in the corners. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, man, that's that's you're, you're 100 percent advice. My advice would be that this girl is is not anywhere near the level of maturity she needs to be in and uh, might never even get to that level. Um, the only the redeeming thing that I can say to her is she has such a difficult time doing what she wants to do in life that maybe she wanted to break up with you for a while and she didn't know how to do it and was building up and then there was just an argument and then she just said that. Or um, I don't know. Have you said anything to her? I have no idea. Um, oh, it's funny. He says, uh, thanks for the weekly podcast. You have no idea what it means to me. See you in Amsterdam. Well, from what this other guy was writing, sir, there's a bunch of uh, beautiful ladies out there in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, dude, what the fuck? They're all riding bikes. They're in great goddamn shape. Go out and go get, go, go find yourself a sweetheart. All right, all right, there you go. I'm afraid to get married, man. Why would, why wouldn't, as a, why man wouldn't be afraid to get married at this point? You know, look at Kobe. Look at the shit he's going through right now. All right, the guy's getting a divorce. Wife's gonna get 70 million bucks. Never hit a layup in her life. You know, can anybody explain these divorce settlements? Can anybody make sense of these fucking things? Tiger Woods' wife, $250 million. She's a babysitter worth a quarter of a billion fucking dollars. Somebody, go ahead, somebody, explain, justify it. Justify it. What? What? He cheated on her? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. He cheated on her. Great. The relationship's over right then. Kobe cheated, right? Shouldn't that relationship been over right then? 
Why did she hang around like some jaded cop for three years trying to get a fucking pension? All right, get that 10 years in. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's too harsh. That shit bothers me, man. Dude, there is an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country. <laughs> and every night I put on the news and I'm waiting for someone to address it. Every night, never see it, you know? And every night I bring up gold digging whores and the whole crowd pulls back like I'm up here talking about Bigfoot, right? <laughs> like I'm saying the moon's made out of cheese or something. <laughs> talking about whores, people. They're everywhere. How many? How many more great men are gonna get chopped in half before we do something? Why is it so quiet in here? God damn, I don't get it. What is it, is it women? Do you think I'm calling you? I'm not calling any woman here a whore, okay? So don't pull back, that, that's not fair, okay? If you brought up wife beaters, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like pull back. I get it. There's guys hitting women, they need to be stopped. We gotta understand that gold digging whores are the wife beaters for men. Yeah, they are, except we don't have that Rihanna lumped up photo in the end, so it's not obvious. It's in the eyes. It's in the lines in your face. It's in Mel Gibson's high-pitched voice on the answering machine. I had to give up my Laker tickets, right? That is the sound of a man being taken for everything he's got. I gotta tell you, sis, I'm envious of women, okay? I'm not saying your problems get solved, but at least they're taken seriously. You know? People, you got 1-800 numbers, you, get, you, got, you got ribbons, there's groups. People give a shit. Anything happens to a guy, it's just considered funny. Some woman cut her husband's dick off, threw in the garbage disposal, and turned it on. People thought it was hilarious. They were like, hey, hey, Stumpy, nobody cares. You think if a guy removed a woman's titty and threw it in the dryer, anybody would be joking about it the next day? The entire country would grind to a halt. There'd be a moment of silence. The NFL would have some special colored headband everybody had to wear for an entire month. The most effeminate color they could possibly come up with. All my heroes are going down. Arnold Schwarzenegger, another great man. Another great man. Taken down by that gold digging whore of a maid he's got. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's not a piece of shit for doing what he did, it was a piece of shit move. But how come only he got chastised? What about the maid? Why was she called the maid the, that entire story? She was never called a whore, ever. <laughs> Just boggled my mind. She knew his wife, first name basis, played with their kids, fucked her husband in their own goddamn bed. That's right down the checklist. First ballot Hall of Fame whore, right there. <laughs> Never. Why do you think she hooked up with him? Because of that 1987 flat top he's still rocking? The giant space between his teeth, I could put this mic cord through? What do you think, maybe it's all that kindergarten cop money laying around the goddamn bedroom. No, it's awful. It's a horrific thing to see as a guy, watching guys go through that shit, you know? And then there's no, there's no sort of examination of it. They just go, ah, he's an idiot. Hey, stupid. <laughs> that guy's stupid? If that guy's stupid, what the fuck am I, right? <laughs> Does it even make sense? Why would you do that? Why would you accomplish all that and then fuck it up, hooking up with one of the ugliest human beings I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> Not saying I'm a prize, I'm just saying, you know? It's gotta be something beyond that, right? You know what I think it is? I think it comes down to the way he talks, you know? That dude should be unloading trucks in Transylvania. That should, be, that should have been the height of his success. But because he's a great man, he had the balls to move to America. Became famous for lifting weights. I lift weights, nobody gives a shit. He lifts weights, ah, 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 becomes super famous. Did he rest on his laurels? No, next challenge. I'm gonna become an actor, despite the fact that nobody can really understand me. <laughs> Against all odds, he starts making movies. Get down, there's a bomb, get out of there. <laughs> becomes one of the biggest blockbuster stars of all time. 
What are you gonna do next, Arnie? I think I'm mad at Kennedy. There's no fucking way you can do that. Bam, he does it. <laughs> Cherry on top, I'm running for governor of a state I can't even pronounce, and he wins the election. <laughs> Why wouldn't this guy think he couldn't bang his maid in his own bed and get away with it? This dude has been in the zone for over four decades. Four decades, nothing but net. Bang a maid in my own bed, dude, that's a layup. Are you serious? I had a hit movie with the midget. I don't even need a condom. Right? And then what happens? The smoke clears. Then all these trolls come out of the woodwork and start judging this great man. All these fatties, these fucking old guys who never got any with their jowls coming on TV. Absolutely reprehensible behavior. <laughs> what kind of a public servant? His, his, his legacy is shrouded. <laughs> <laughs> like they have any idea what it's like to be tempted at that level, right? Like they have groupies as they waddle out to their mercury tracer <laughs> parked on the other side of a dumpster. Really? You're beating them off? <laughs> this guy, he's not a great man anymore? Terminator doesn't count? Is that what the fuck you're telling me? Because he fucked Alice? Really? He's still not a great man because he did that. Then that's, the whole thing's over? Anybody here think they could move to Austria, learn the language, become famous for working out, then be a movie star, then marry into their royalty and hold public office? How many lifetimes would you need? I'm on my third attempt at Rosetta Stone Spanish. All right? How can I judge these guys? I can barely handle the temptations of Facebook. I'm gonna judge Tiger Woods. I golf, I don't walk off the 18th hole and there's a busload of Scandinavian women waiting to fuck my brains out. Sorry, ladies, gotta go home to the wife, right? No, it kills me. And there's no help out there for guys. There isn't. There's nothing out there to help you handle becoming rich and famous. There's nothing to prepare you for that, for that platoon of whores that's gonna form on the horizon, right? Like Braveheart, faces painted, skirts on, will run down the hill, they'll jump on your dick in front of your wife. They don't give a shit. It's not even a handbook out there. I saw one article written about it on, time, on the cover of Time magazine. It said, why do so many rich, famous, and powerful men act like absolute pigs, right? And the article was actually written by a woman. That's like me writing a book, the third trimester, and what to expect. <laughs> Ladies, you're gonna feel a pressure. How the hell would I know? You don't wanna hear that from me, right? Then why is this woman telling me what it's like to have a dick? That makes no sense. You have no idea what it's like to have a dick. 24-7, do it, do it, fuck it, do it. That's what it's saying. <laughs> do it, do it. Yeah, do it. That's how we survived as a species. Every man in here is programmed to fuck 85% of the women in this room, right? Yeah, we are. Do it, do it, fuck it, do it, you know? It's just that you won't. That's the only reason why we don't, you know? That's not you keeping your dick in check, you know? Some guy at, at Home Depot working there, he wants to fuck just as many women as a celebrity, right? But he, he can't do it, because whores don't care about lumber, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the second he hits the fucking lottery, all of a sudden, you know that, do it, do it, fuck it, do it, you know? That wasn't affecting his life, then all of a sudden these whores show up, I'll do it, I'll suck it, I'll do it, right? <laughs> no, somebody's got, somebody's got to step up, all right? I'm not even blaming whores, really. Guys, we're fucking idiots. What are we doing? Why are we working so hard and then giving it all away to some chick who did three shifts at a, at a fucking Hooters, you know? <laughs> They're fucking bums sitting there with fucking Dorito dust in their cleavage, walking around with hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm sick of that shit. That's what the law says. hundred years ago, I could beat you with a fucking mop handle. and be like, well, that's what the law says. Doesn't make us right. No, it's unreal. And all this shit's going down and we don't, we, we're not doing anything. What are we doing? Same old shit. Sitting around watching Shark Week, right? <laughs> watching shit about poisonous snakes half a world away. Just filling your head up with all this useless information. What to do if you come face to face with a Bengal tiger? Don't look at it. Don't look away. Slowly back up as you push your friend forward, right? <laughs> all 
this useless information, yet hang it between your legs is this thing that could crumble your entire empire seven minutes or less. Don't know a fucking thing about it. <laughs> Even worse, you think it's your friend. <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because your dick, your dick's like a dreamer. You know? Your dick believes. It's like a motivational speaker. <laughs> I don't give a shit what question you ask it. It's always like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Exit strategy. Later. We'll be fine. Where's your dick when you get caught, right? Then it's just slumped over, like, hey, you know, I thought it was a good idea, you know? Yeah. You have to know that. Dude, your if your dick was a third base coach, it wouldn't hold anybody up. It'd just be fucking waving people around. Everybody, go in standing up. You got it, you got it. Oh, shit, there she comes. Slide, slide, slide. All right, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope you had as good a time as I did. Thank you. All right, questions. All right, Bill, uh, I have a question for you. I was hoping you might be able to shine some insight on this. I have this great friend that that's a girl. Mistake. Um, and we get along great, and we have never had any sort of sexual tension. Fucking up. Or interest, despite her being attractive. All right, dude, right there, you're either gay or you're, or you're an idiot. And I'm, gonna try, I'm giving you some tough love here. That's a fucking stupid situation to be involved in. That's stupid. All right? Unless you're using her to attract other females to get you fucking laid. Let's see if this is the case. I will continue reading. So she has this smoking hot friend. Oh, there we go. That I'd met a few times and always flirted with, but, uh, but it's just been overall friendly. So this chick calls me up one night, and I'm at the bar at like midnight and asks if I want to stay up drinking with her, and she come pick me up. So obviously I agree. Things go very good and we have a few drinks and flirt. And when I make my move, she gets all upset like I should have known. She just wants to be friends when she calls me up at midnight to say to stay up drinking with her alone. After the incident, the bitch still has the balls to, sl to ask to sleep over. Uh, since then, I have noticed all her friends are trying to be my friend when all I want to do is rail the shit out of them. Bill, I was hoping you could you should... You could shine some light on the situation and help me out. Yeah, dude. Never have a friend as a, as a female. You know, you, you always got to be fucking them. That's the only reason to be around them. You know? I know that sounds really sexist. But, you know, I, I just... I'm speaking from me. There's no fucking point in hanging out with that level of frustration... If you're not having sex with them, and if they're actually like a good friend, then that's the one that you should. Uh, I mean, that's the ultimate. If you're banging them and they're also a great friend, that's the one you marry, because you got a connection there, right? But if you just, I mean, they're using you as like a live teddy bear, and um, yeah, the next time they call up, just be like, no, I'm, I, I'm not, I can't hang out tonight. Well, what are you doing? I'm going to go out and try to get some ass tonight. I know I'm not getting any from you. And it's frustrating because you're hot and I want to bend you over every piece of fucking furniture in my apartment. Oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Yeah, well, I just did. Are you going to come over here and fuck me? Well, then great. I have to go. Why are you being so mean? I'm not being mean. I'm being honest. Okay? Do you know how many times I've jerked off to you? It's fucking it's annoying. That you just, you just, I'm telling you, like, that's a little aggressive, but that's what you have to start doing. You just have to be straightforward and honest and don't do it like I just said it. Do it, if, do it how you can do it and pull it off and you just say it like that. Just be like, yeah, I want to go out. I want to try to get laid tonight. All right. And I go out with you and you're not fucking me. And then other girls see me with you and they think that I am fucking you, which I'm not. And I end up going home, uh, dry humping my futon, you know, and it's really fucking with my self-esteem. Okay, so that's it. So basically, what are you saying? You're saying that um, if I don't suck your cock, you don't want to hang out with me? Yes, that is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Your conversations are awful. You know, I'm sure they're interesting to other females, but not to me. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that shit. I could give a shit about the hills 
the OC, the ocean, or whatever the fuck other stupid show you want. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I want to fuck you. Okay? It's World's uh, right there. You know what it is? You ever see you watch the World Series of Poker when you go all in? That's what you do. Just say what the fuck you want to do. You push all your chips in, then you stand up and you start walking around. You wait for that next card to drop. <laughs> you see what the fuck happens. Yeah, dude. That's my advice. Get out of that whole circle of, yeah, he's like a big teddy bear. Fuck that. Fuck that. All right? You're not a teddy bear. Well, you are one right now. You got to stop being that guy. So fuck all of them. Go, uh, where are your guy friends? What are they doing? Go hang out with them. Go get a fucking wingman. Get yourself back in the game. And uh, go out there and talk some shit. Hit on some girl you don't give a fuck about so you can practice not giving a fuck. And just say a bunch of shit that you would never say to some girl that you gave a shit about. And because you don't give a fuck if the girl says no. Start with that. You know, always wear a condom. And, uh, and that's it. That's what I would do. That's what I should have done. I didn't. I just have that knowledge now because I'm fucking, uh, have I ever been the, you know, someone I was never the friend, but I was definitely the douchebag. I was definitely the, the, uh, not even pussy whipped. It wasn't even pussy whipped. It was just, I couldn't fucking speak up for myself. I was afraid of having a confrontation. And then by the time I had the final confrontation, I was like, and it was like fucking a year worth of shit and we broke up. Um, but that's a whole nother story.